So in this screencast, I'm going to look at how we do t-tests. We will do one sample t-test and then we'll do two sample t-tests. So first of all, one sample t-test. So I've already read in some data, we've got some Cavendish data. So if I look at this, um, you can see we've got a single column called density. And let's say I wanted to test if this is equal to say 5.5. So how can I do a t-test for that? So I'd go t.test. Then with one sample, I need to let it know where it's going to find the data. So in this case, it's in the Cavendish, and it's the column called density. Now if I just do that as it is, that is actually testing whether it's equal to zero. And I want to test if it's equal to some other value. So let's try doing that. So again, t.test. And if you look at mu, it says mu is a number indicator of the true value of the mean that you're testing for. So we'll use that one. And we're going to do 5.5. So here's our output. It tells us we've done a one sample t-test. told us where it got the data from. Here is the observed value of the test statistic. So minus 1.2025. Remember the rule of thumb is if that is less than minus 2 or greater than 2, we're probably going to reject. Here's the degrees of freedom, 28. You could actually check, if you notice, when we go back up to the data, we have 29 observations. And in this case, your degrees of freedom will be the number of observations minus one. So that's why we've got 28 there. And here's the p-value. So the p-value in this case is 0.2392. So at a 5% level, we would reject if that was less than 0.05. It's not less than 0.05, so we will retain the null hypothesis. As well, it will also give you here, you've got the 95% confidence interval for the true value of the mean density. And also here tells you the mean density. So there's your one sample t-test, no problem. Now, what about two sample? Well, there's two ways we can do it. First of all, let's look at the wood data. So here we have a data frame where the first column tells you which group is where it has high preservative or low preservative and the amount of wood loss. We might want to ask the question of, is there a difference in the amount of loss for the high preservative compared with the low preservative? Well, the first thing you can do is using a formula. So you go t.test and then you go, well, the thing I'm interested in is loss. I want to know if there's a relationship with which preservative it gets. So you read this as this is the thing that I'm measuring and this is where the groups are. In this case, we've got our two groups, high and low. You have to tell it where the data is. Wood, and then hit that. So it's done a Welch two sample t-test. The observed test statistic is minus seven. So looking at this, we say that if we're going to test that the true difference in means is not equal to zero, then we've got an observed test of minus 7.54. So we're probably going to reject that 5% level. Here's our degrees of freedom of 30.269. And here is our p-value. So our p-value is 1.935 times 10 to the minus 8. So this is a lot less than 0 0.05. So we reject the hypothesis and say there's a difference in the means. Now, it may be that what this is doing is it's not assuming that the variance in each group is the same. This is your standard two-sample t-test. But if you wanted to assume that they are the same, that is to do a pooled variance, you can also do that by coming down and going var.equal, that is the variance between the two groups is equal, and this now do a pooled test. Again, you've got the same test statistic, your degrees of freedom are a little bit different, and your p-value is a little bit different. The other thing it's got here is the 95% confidence of the true difference between the means for each group and here is the sample mean in each group as well. Now sometimes your data will not be like this, this two column system. It might be that instead you were just given the high levels and the low levels where you can still do a two sample t-test but now you just give it the two values. So again we've got the Welch two sample compare up to this, it's giving exactly the same results. And it's just now I'm saying that this is all the observations in one group and this is the observation in the other group. But you'll notice that this and this are equivalent. 
The other thing we do is, again, we can say that we want the bar dot equal equals true. So now again, this is now doing a pooled two sample t test. So the results here are exactly the same as the results we got here before. So you can either use the formula method or you can just give the two groups of observations. That's it. Bye.